How's it going everyone? Frost here. Uh, today I wanted to make a quick tutorial on the basics of operating and using USAF's AC-130U. Uh, take note that the footage you'll see in the video is of the AC-130U beta and not the full release. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to show you is how to rearm the aircraft. I found rearming only available through ACE. So what I'm doing is using my Fortify tool, but if you don't have that, you can utilize Zeus or the editor and spawn in a Huron ammo container. Once you place it, go to Rearm and then AC-130 Spooky 2 using Ace. And as you see, it'll pop up a little window with a progress bar. It takes maybe five to 10 seconds. And after that progress is complete, you can delete the ammo container because the bird is fully rearmed. Next, we're gonna take a look at the cockpit. Uh, more specifically the pilot seat and the pilot seat has access to the tactical awareness display it's a multifunctional display in the center of the cockpit that TAD display displays uh, information uh, including friendly positions hostile marks uh, reference points for the gunners both IR and TV operators uh, people that have access to the marker system include the IR operator, TV operator, fire control officer, and the electronic warfare officer. So all four of those guys, uh, if we have people in those slots, can add and edit markers that feed directly to that TAD display. Uh, additionally, a thing to note is the AC-130 has a very unique flight model. It is a very heavy flight model. So if you've ever flown any of the C-130s by USAF, CUP, or RHS, it does not fly like them. Now for the autopilot, scroll wheel down to autopilot GS. Set your height to recommended 1000 with a radius of 1200 and a speed of 305. To pan the map, right click and then left click to place your marker. That's your target center. Additionally, if you want another set of height and speed, I recommend using a height of 1500, radius of 1800 and a speed of 375. This will keep you out of man pad range uh, the only downside is that your shots will be slightly uh, less accurate than if it were 1000 height, 1200 radius, and 305 speed. Quick thing to note is if you are higher than your desired altitude that you put into your autopilot, your aircraft might crash. It is a bug at the moment. This might be fixed later. After you press AP on in the autopilot GS menu, it'll kick you to the IR operator seat. For this seat, you have your own camera as well as access to all three armaments, the GAO, the Force, and the 105. Additionally, one of the first things you're going to want to do is cycle through your thermal visions. To do this, you use B as in Bravo to utilize A3TI. If you don't have A3TI, then you can just utilize Vanilla Arma by pressing N. To manually range your weapon, press T as in Tango on your keyboard. Once you do that, in the top right under the weapon name, it'll tell you in meters what your weapon is ranged at. To automatically range your weapons, you have to use your laser. That requires you to cycle through your weapons by pressing F as in Foxtrot until you get to laser, turn it on, and then lock your laser by pressing T as in Tango. Now your weapons will automatically range. Using the scroll wheel, you'll have different marker types available in green. These are Mark RP, Mark FP, Mark HP, and Designate Friendly Track, or DESF Track. There can only be a total of five friendly markers and five hostile markers active at the same time. Only one person can use the mark RP or mark a reference point for the pilot to utilize as a current reference point. If the operator uses the DESF track marker over a friendly unit, it'll keep them marked as long as they have the blue four. Now taking a look at the targeting system that you can access through the scroll menu highlighted in green, it'll pull up a little map just like the autopilot screen, but this time you just have hostile mark, uh, friendly marks, and points of interest. By left clicking on the map you can place a marker down and then in the bottom left you can mark the target. Uh, depending if you're in the uh, point of interest tab, friendly mark tab, or hostile mark tab is where that mark target is going to go. From there, if it's a point of interest, you can rename it. Uh, this is incredibly useful, especially if you have no fire areas such as churches in your campaigns or scenarios, or if you have a friendly position, you can also mark that as well. For employing the spooky weapons, they're quite simple. 
Uh, the Gao has 2,000 rounds and has three burst settings, 25, 50, and 100. The Bowforce has two flavors with HE rounds and Sable rounds, both having 246 rounds each. To access the Sable rounds, you'll have to scroll wheel down and reload the Sable rounds. The 105 only has a 100 rounds, um, but they are highly explosive. It's best to utilize the turret prograde marker that is currently featured at the heading tape on the screen uh, towards the top of the page. I've zoomed in slightly so that you can clearly see the marker. The gunner wants to keep this symbol as close to the center of their screen as possible. The marker shows the offset of your turret relative to the gunship. Gunners can use this icon as a cue on how to offset fire and estimate their impact points. Now, going back to the pilot seat, if you press left control and right mouse click, you can access the side HUD. For the side HUD, I'm not going to go into too much detail on everything that the side HUD entails, but I will talk about specifically the reference point tangent indicator, which is located uh, inside the pilot operations manual and in the bottom left corner of the side HUD. Now, the reference point tangent indicator, you can utilize a current system reference point, for example, a reference point that the operators can place and that will tell the pilot whether or not he is too fast, too slow, too high, or too low uh, for an optimal angle attack based off of the reference point. To simplify things a bit, the pilot just has to keep the cross and the circle as center and even as possible. This will also keep the gunners from hitting their weapon limits, which I will demonstrate and show you what that looks like later on in the video. Additionally, I will have links to the Pilot Operations Manual Part 1 and 2, as well as the Sensor Operations Manual uh, linked in the description below. Now let's talk about the countermeasure system, starting with flares. In the top right, it'll tell you what countermeasure you currently have active. With USAF modules, they are programs and they are phonetic, so it'll be Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, so on and so forth. And it'll tell you the amount of flares will be released and how many seconds it'll take to release them. For example, as you can see, uh, now it is the Charlie program, 40 flares over two and a half seconds. Remember that these flares will only divert IR guided missiles. For radar guided missiles, the AC-130 has a passive ECM system that runs once the missile is detected on the radar. For this next part, I've changed the time of day to night. That way we can see what it looks like to use night vision and thermals together with A3TI's fusion mode. First, press N as in November to cycle to your vanilla night vision goggles, and then press B as in Bravo to cycle through your A3TI thermals. Essentially what this does is it combines the power of night vision and thermals to provide a better picture for low light conditions. With fusion mode now enabled, you'll be able to not only see enemies better, but you'll also be able to take advantage of the sparkle function. To use the IR laser, or the sparkle function, you have to turn your laser on and then press L as in Lima on your keyboard. Once you do this, it'll start pulsating a white or black beam depending on what thermal vision you're in. You'll also notice the IR laser starts with a strobing effect. You can change this by pressing left control and L as in Lima to have a steady beam. The sparkle is a very useful tool. Personally, I've used it in the past and in previous operations for indicating where fleeing HVTs are. Last but not least, I have some footage of the weapon limit, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. Here I am using the bow force and I am firing a few rounds. Notice of how the rounds steadily rise up and get less accurate. That is because I have hit my weapon limit. Alright everyone, that's going to be it for this guide. If you found this guide helpful in any way, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Additionally, in the description, I'll leave links to the USAF as well as the A3TI Discord. Make sure to pop in there and show your love for the mods as they do really shape this game to make something great.